The last example we'll be looking at in this chapter is going to be problem 11. In problem 11, we'll be using binary variables to design a supply chain. This example is a fairly sophisticated way of using binary variables. So although I will go through it fairly fast and it might make sense to you right away, I want you to work on this problem on your own for sure. So in this problem, you have six possible plants that you can open. From these plants, you'll be shipping to four possible warehouse locations. And then from these four warehouse locations, you'll be shipping to five customer locations. With each plant, you have a decision whether you're going to operate that plant or not. If you choose to operate a plant, you're given the fixed cost to operate the plant. You're given the plant capacity. And you also know how much it would cost you to ship one unit from a plant to a warehouse. The same thing goes for the warehouses. For each warehouse, we know the fixed cost of operating that warehouse if you decide to open it up. And then if you open up a warehouse, you'll be able to ship anything through that warehouse from a plant to a customer. And you have the demand that's needed by each customer location. So our ultimate goal is to decide which plants to operate, which warehouses to operate. Once we decide on that, then the next set of decisions is how much to ship from which plant to which warehouse, how much to ship from which warehouse to which customer. And given the cost, we'd like to minimize the total fixed cost of operating and the cost of shipping from the plant to the warehouse and warehouse to the customer. So this is the data of the problem. If you look at all the decision variables involved, that we have this. We have this. You have zero one variables that tells you which plants will be open and which plants will not be. You have variables that tells you what will be shipped from which plant to which warehouse. You'll have zero one variables that tells you which warehouses will be open and which warehouses will not be open. And you will have decision variables that tells you what will be shipped from which warehouse to which customer. Now, let's focus our attention to the plant to warehouse portion and try to add linking constraints. So here's what I have here. I froze the first row, so I'm going to go this way. Let me make this slightly bigger. All right. So I just added some numbers here. I made a scenario in that I am opening up all plants but plant three, and I also have, let's say, shipments of one unit from each plant to each warehouse. Two types of linking constraints here. The first one is going to look at the total that's shipped out of a warehouse, which is simply the sum of the rows. Total shipped out of a plant, which is simply some of these cells. For example, in O5 here, I get sum of K5 through N5, which tells me how much is shipped out of plant three. And then in the linking constraint, I will be linking the capacity of that plant to the zero one variable of operating that plant or not. So if a plant is open like plant one, then the total shipment out of the plant can be, can go up to 300. If a plant is not open like plant three, then the total capacity, the total shipments out of that plant is going to be zero. So the total ship cannot exceed that. And I'm going to ensure that by adding constraints. But what I'm doing here is for each plant, I'm looking at the plant capacity, I'm multiplying it with the zero one decision. And that way, if a plant is opened, then the total shipment can go up to the capacity. And if a plant is not open, the total shipment is going to be zero. Similarly, in row 10 here, I'm looking at how much is shipped 
to each warehouse. For example, this value in K10 shows me the summation from K3 to K8, which tells me how much is shipped in total to warehouse one. And then I'm going to link it to these linking cells in K11, which will tell me, look at B20, and B20, by the way, tells you whether that warehouse is open or not. If this is one, then you just choose a very large value. It says, you know what, you can ship anything to their warehouse up to a very large number. In this formula, instead of choosing 9999, I could have chosen the sum of these six cells, which is 1800, because you know that that's going to be the most that can be shipped into a warehouse. And I do that for all warehouses. And so in row 10, I look at how much is shipped to a warehouse. And in row 11, I make sure that that shipment level is linked to whether that warehouse is open or not. In the next step, I'm going to add more links. This time I need to look at warehouses and the shipments outside out of the, the shipments out of the warehouses. So I'm going to look at this way. And again, freezing pains. So what I did here is I have said, let's make sure that I have zero one variables for the warehouses. I know that if a warehouse get a zero because of what I'm doing in, I know that if the warehouse gets a zero, because of what I'm doing in D20 and what I'm doing in row 12, uh, nothing will be shipped out of a plant into that warehouse. So this means I will not be able to ship anything out, out of that warehouse. The next thing I need to do is I need to look at total shipped out of each warehouse. And I need to make sure that this, these numbers in row 29 are equal to these numbers in row 10. I'm going to add a constraint onto that so that will ensure that whatever gets shipped into a warehouse from a plant will be shipped out of the warehouse to a customer. And then here I sum my rows for each customer, which shows me how much each customer receives. So now I'm actually ready to set up my constraints, but I don't have my objective function. That's what I'm going to do next. In the objective function, I have fixed costs and shipping costs. If you look at plant-related fixed costs, I see this. Well, you look at the zero ones for the plants, which tells you whether you open up the plant or not, and then you multiply it with the fixed cost of the plant. That tells you what's the total cost of opening up so many plants. The next one is warehouse-related fixed costs, which looks at the fixed cost of operating a warehouse and then multiplies it with the, the decision of whether to open up that warehouse or not. Then I have shipping costs. How much does it cost me to ship items from the plants to the warehouses? That's the multiplication of the costs here and the shipment plan here. Then I have shipping costs from the warehouse to the customers. This is the cost of shipping from the warehouse to the customers, and this is how much I ship. And then finally, I have my total cost, which is the sum of all these four numbers. So now that I have everything available, let's add the constraints here. I go to the solver ribbon. I go to model. I'm trying to optimize my objective is the total cost. I'm not maximizing it, I'm minimizing it. So I'm going to go ahead and choose minimize here. My variables. So I have these as my variables. And then these as my variables. And I have these as my variables. And I have these as my variables. So I have four sets of variables, 
binary variables that tells me whether I'm going to open up the plants or not, binary variables that tells me whether I'm going to open up the warehouses or not, shipment variables that tells me how much I'm shipping from each plant to each warehouse, and shipment variables that tells me how much I'm shipping from each warehouse to each customer. Then I come to my constraints. Well, I need to say total shipped. I need to say total shipped out of a warehouse should not be more than its existing capacity, which could be zero or full capacity. Then I need to add total shipped to a warehouse should be less than or equal to whether that warehouse is open or not. If it's open, there is no limit. If it's not, there is you can't ship anything. Then the next one is going to tell me what you ship into a warehouse should be the same as what you ship out of the warehouse and then we need to satisfy the demand so what you ship to the customers should be at least as much as the demand so those are all my normal constraints then I need to add my binary constraints which says well you need to make sure that these values are binary and then you need to make sure that these values are binary now I have added all my constraints I have my objective function I have my decision variables I'm ready to solve I hit my green button and let's kill this and I get the solution which tells me I'm going to open up plants 2 and 3, 5 and 6 and as you can see I'm not shipping anything out of the non-opened plants and then I'm only opening up warehouse 3 and warehouse 4 and I'm shipping stuff from the plants to the warehouses from warehouses to the customers and I'm satisfying the entire demand for $855,000. So that concludes our analysis. As I said, this is a fairly sophisticated problem. It'll take you a while to go through this slowly and I'll be happy to answer your questions about this video and the previous videos uh, over email and during class time.